Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Maximum Automation. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can integrate your scripts with Jenkins for CI CD setup. In my previous video, we have seen how we can create our framework in C sharp using NUnit, SpecFlow, or any other C sharp test framework. But once we are done with our framework and we have our automated scripts or tests available, then the next thing is to run those tests. We know we can run those tests manually, but as part of the CI CD process, we want the automation scripts to run automatically when we have a new check in in the repository or daily scheduled builds, which runs mostly at night. So once we start our day, then we'll already have the automation test results with us, which was executed on the latest build of the application. And then we can verify by looking into those results that if we can move ahead with the latest build or not. So let's see how we can invoke an automation script created using .NET platform through Jenkins. This is my Jenkins home page and I'll create a new project in Jenkins to run our automation script. If you want to see how to set up Jenkins and configure the build, then you can watch my previous videos also. I have provided the link in the description and you can find it in the card button above. Now to create a new project, click on a new item. And then I'll provide the name of the project as automation and unit. The project which I'm going to run is the N unit project, which is created on .NET 6.0 platform. If you want to see that how to create that project, then you can watch my previous videos. Now select the freestyle project and then click on OK. After that, it will move us to configuration page. And here under the general section, we can provide the description of the project. You can type any description. And if you don't want to provide, then you can leave it as well because it's not a mandatory field. Then we have different configuration settings like for source code management, for build triggers, for build environment. You can use any of these settings based on your requirement. Now the most important part in the configuration is the build step. Where we have to provide the details of how we are going to build the project to run our automation test. Here, if I click on add build step, then we can see these options which are coming by default. Like if you want to run shell script or window batch command to build or invoke your project. But for our case, nothing is listed here, which we can build for our .NET test project. So to get the list of the items here related to the .NET platform, First, we need to install a plugin for the same. And to install it, we need to go back to the dashboard. Click on Manage Jenkins. And then choose Managed Plugins. Then here, select the Available tab. And type .NET SDK. Here we got the plugin for .NET SDK support. Check this plugin and install it. This will take few minutes to download and install the plugin. Once downloaded, then we can utilize the .NET SDK to build our project and to run the unit tests. So the installation is done. Now let's move to the dashboard again. And then click on Manage Jenkins. Select Global Tool Configuration. And then move down to the .NET SDK configuration. 
you will get this configuration only when you install the .NET SDK support plugin. Then here you can add the .NET SDK to choose from your system. If you have multiple SDK installed on your machine, if you have only single SDK installed on your machine, or you want to build your project using the latest SDK available on your system, then you can avoid this step because at the time of build step creation will get the default option also to choose for .NET SDK. But if you want to create configuration based on different SDKs, then you can provide the name of the configuration here. Then here it provides the option to install the SDK automatically. You can choose this option if you want Jenkins to install the SDK for you. But if SDKs are already installed on your machine, then you can uncheck this option. And then provide the install location of the SDK. And then save the configuration. Similarly, if you want, you can add different .NET SDK configuration based on different versions. Now let's move to the project and choose the configure option. Then move to the build steps again. Now if I click here, then you can see we are now getting different options for .NET to build, clean, publish, and to run unit test cases. Now I can choose different options to build a pipeline for my .NET project. First of all, I'm going to choose the .NET clean option to clean the build directory. And then we can provide the .NET SDK to clean the project output directory. You can see here we are getting two options. One is for default SDK and the another one is for .NET 6 which we have just configured in the global configuration. In case of default SDK, it will pick the latest SDK details from your machine. But if you want to use any specific SDK version, then you can create the configuration and then choose the option from here. Right now, for me, both default and .NET 6 option points to the same SDK, which is .NET 6.0. So if I choose default instead of .NET 6, then also it will pick the same SDK. After that, provide the project or solution path. So let me copy the project path. And then I'll paste it over here. After that, provide the project configuration type. I'm going to choose release. Then you can provide the work directory from where you want to execute the command. In our case, we don't need to run our project from a specified directory. So I'll leave this option. Then if you want to continue your build in case of any error or build failure, you can check this option. After that, the next step which we need to perform is to build our project. So let me add another build step. And here I'll choose the .NET build project option from the list. Again, provide the .NET SDK. Let me choose .NET 6 this time, just to show that it doesn't gonna make any difference. Then I'll provide the project location. I'll leave all these fields and we'll check this continue on error. And then the final step is to run our test. So let me choose .NET run unit test option from the list. I'll again choose default option for .NET SDK. Then project path. Configuration I can choose as release. 
And again, we don't need any work directory to run our tests. And here you can see we have more configuration options while running the tests. You can choose these options based on your requirement. Currently, the option which I have selected is the bare minimum which we need to provide to run our automation test. Now let me save the configuration. And if I again go to the build steps under configuration, then we can see first it will perform the step to clean the project. After that, it will build the project. And at last, it will run the test. The test run command also builds the project. So if you want, you can remove this extra build project step because that will be taken care of by .NET test command as part of its prerequisite. Now we have only two steps. One is to clean the project output and the other one is to run the test. So let me save the configuration changes. And we'll go back to the project. So we have created our project to run the automation test using our .NET project. Now let me click on build now to trigger the build. You can see here the build has been triggered. If I click on this build and if I move to the console output, then here we can see the generated logs. We can see first it runs the .NET clean command to clean the project output. And then the .NET test command to run our tests. We can see that the execution has been started. Now it will run all the tests available in our project. And once the execution is done, then we can see the last triggered build status in Jenkins, whether the build is passed or failed. So this way you can execute your automation test created using a .NET project. Now the execution is done. And we can see in the logs that the execution is finished and this build failed. Here we can see that one test case has failed and five has passed. And we can see the reason for failure as well, that no such element exception, because it could not find the element with this locator. So this is how you can execute your automation test created using a .NET project. That's it for today. I hope you like this video. Please put your comments in the comment box in case of any query. Also, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.